Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Paul Yeski from the Swine Vet Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. Always great to see you, Paul. It's good to see you again. I want to talk about disease elimination, and to, I think, a lot of younger people in the industry, that might seem like a pretty bold concept, but you've been involved with elimination or eradication programs before, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've, uh, it's one of the things I've enjoyed to do, and it's one of the things that uh, we've worked on many different ways. And there's multiple ways of disease elimination. Uh, the, the first one that was done, probably the uh, one method that's the most successful is depopulation, repopulation. And that was done like with pseudorabies mm -hmm. back in the 1980s, as I recall? The pseudorabies was one of them. I mean, there was also, heard, we also were able to do it with vaccine. We had a very good vaccine with pseudorabies, and so we were able to do eliminations by just test and removal. And so we would take out all the field uh, positive animals, the animals that test positive to the field strain, and we could uh, eliminate those animals and use enough vaccine to hold the, the virus down to a low enough level that those animals could exit and uh, we didn't have to do the depopulation, repopulation. But it was a different, um, different disease, different uh, vaccine, different, uh, a few different things than we have today, but that particular disease lent itself well to test and removal, which isn't one that is a common method. The depopulation, repopulation allows you to remove multiple diseases at one time. Or if you had poor genetics or poor parity structure, and so some people would do that, uh, would choose that procedure because they wanted to fix several problems at once. And, and I guess, um, you know, looking back on these uh, elimination programs, it's not always a virus or a bacterium. It yeah. could be a parasite. Mange is one that comes to mind. And uh, there was, uh, when I first st started practice, uh, when I worked on pig farms before I got through veterinary school and uh, when I first started practice, uh, lice and mange were very common. Uh, almost every herd had it and it was a very uh, difficult, difficult parasite to live with because uh, really all you were doing was keeping it at a low level. And uh, with the um, advent of the ivermectins coming online uh, and becoming available, then we had an opportunity to do elimination. And so then we started doing the eliminations. And uh, one of the first things I did as a veterinarian was to go through a herd and inject it for uh, a mange and lice elimination program as a, uh, as a beginning of that project. And so uh, again, it's been <coughs> a very successful program. We were able to uh, take away one of uh, the more difficult jobs to do on the farm was treating pigs for mange. And so uh, the good thing is we don't have to do it anymore. And um, we've been able to uh, essentially push it out of the industry. Now, you've been spending a lot of your time trying to eliminate mycoplasma, and I believe you've had some success. Um, why are you targeting mycoplasma in particular? And yeah, mycoplasma, uh, mostly because we can do it. Number one, uh, mycoplasma is another bug that lends itself well to a herd closure and elimination. And so we can do that without having to go to the depop repop, or we can actually do it in a, a standing population. And we're taking advantage of the disease ecology, how the disease moves through the, through the uh, population. It's a slow moving disease and the animals develop immunity. When they develop immunity, they stop shedding. And so what we do is a herd closure. We allow the animals to all be exposed and we then allow them to develop immunity, stop shedding, and then we're able to bring negative animals back into the herd and roll the other animals out as, cull as normal culls. And I guess with mycoplasma too, you have not just vaccines, but you have feed medications, injectable antibiotics that Absolutely. can help you fight the disease as well. And it's all part of the program. We put together a program uh, for the eliminations, and there's multiple different programs we've done, but the most common one is the long-term herd closure uh, using a Maria Peter's work uh, that the, the organism can be shed up to 240 days, and so that's where the 240 days comes from. And we then, at the very end of that herd closure, we expose all the animals up front, make sure everybody's exposed and immune, and then we wait the 240 days after we determine when everybody's exposed. And then at the end, we use some medication as a secondary step to make sure we've controlled everything before uh, we bring the negative animals back in. 
So it's a combination of vaccination, uh, medication, and time, and immunity, herd immunity. And so we do the vaccinations. Generally, we're doing now more of a quarterly vaccination. We just start the herd on, make sure we're keeping as much immunity as possible, reducing the shedding as much as we can, reducing the organisms as much as we can prior to the medication. Do the medication as the last thing to uh, make sure the numbers are, uh, are at a low enough level that they're not, gonna go, uh, they're not going to infect other animals when we bring the negatives in. Now you've obviously had success doing this on numerous farms, but is it conceivable that we could eliminate mycoplasma in the same way that we've eliminated PRV or, or lice and mange? Absolutely, uh, I think it's a, it's a disease that could easily, I shouldn't say easily, <laughs> it's a disease that could be eliminated. And, uh, and what we know from some of the work we were able to do uh, with, uh, we did a project with Beringer Ingelheim where we, um, we did monitor finishing sites to see what the uh, status of the finishing sites were. And so we looked at pigs that were negative pigs placed in positive areas, because it's always been the question, I can eliminate from my sow herd, I can be successful on my sow herd, but I'm gonna put my finishing pigs in Iowa and they're just gonna get re-exposed and I'm not gonna be able to get the benefit because the benefit is on the grow finish side. And what we did in this particular study was we were able to track a uh, hundred different finishing sites uh, through the summer, uh, through the summer, fall, and the spring, winter, spring, uh, because those are the most likely seasons to see it happen. And we tracked those sites through to see if there was uh, lateral exposure from other herds. And what we found is it happens, it just happens at a very low rate. And we saw that only 6% of those herds would become infected. And so the advantage <coughs> that we know now is that it's not likely to become, a herd's not likely to become laterally infected it's more likely coming through the system. So if you have a mycoplasma problem in your system, you likely have a system problem, it's not the neighborhood problem. But also knowing how mycoplasma can be transmitted from farm to farm, you can go through a lot of time, expense, and effort to eliminate it, but isn't it possible that you could get it again six months later? It's possible, it's just the odds are real low. Like I say, 6% isn't the high lateral infection rate. I know from some of our previous conversations about this, um, you have indicated that maybe elimination isn't possible on all farms. Yeah. I guess you've got to have certain types of facilities, location, certainly management, biosecurity. Um, how, can, how can we change that so that maybe all farms could consider an elimination program? The farms that are easiest are the uh, farms that are multi-site production where we have a farrow to wean site and we don't have all stages of production on the site at a given time. Yeah. And so uh, in those populations, I think it's a matter of just following the, uh, following the protocol and, and completing the protocol. Uh, so I think most sites that are in that situation can do it. The herds that, have, that are farrow to finish and have all ages of pigs on site, that's where the challenge is gonna be and we may need to look at doing some partial depopulations where we would empty out nursery and finishing stages for a short period of time just to be able to generate that window where we don't have those ages of pigs on the site at the given time. Uh, one of the advantages of doing the um, cleanup programs within the herd is your payback period is much shorter versus doing mm -hmm. a, a depopulation, repopulation. Oftentimes we're looking at a couple years to repay that versus a couple months. I think there's, there are ways that we can do it on really any given farm. It's just finding out um, creative ways to do it. And the depopulation, repopulation would certainly be an option. It's the more expensive option because it takes longer to get the payback because you just have more time without pigs. Uh, one of the things we, we've got to think about as we go forward here is what are the opportunities we can look at as new technologies come online, uh, better diagnostics, new antibiotics, new um, testing pro procedures. Are there ways we can manipulate these tools 
to eliminate disease so we don't have to deal so we don't have to deal with it and the pigs don't have to deal with it and so that's that's really what I've tried to do over the course of time is when something new comes out is how could we leverage this into a new tool is there a way we can get that out of the system